Every year, millions of anime fans worldwide ruin their sleep schedules to tune in to Jump Festa. During those few days, there are non-stop announcements from all sorts of the Shonen Jump lineup. This year, we actually had a pretty good time. Teasers from things like Spy X Family and Chainsaw Man, Dr. Stone giving us more content with a character who desires it all, Hell's Paradise is getting an anime from Studio... Gosh damn it, Mappa, please, man. Another JJK Volume Zero movie trailer and My Hero Academia getting a quick teaser for their sixth season in one of their biggest arcs yet, the Paranormal Liberation War. At least for me, these were the worthwhile tidbits that I mostly cared about. However, there is one series that had the entire world on the edge of their fucking seats. One series that for years were made fun of for never returning. A series with one of the best character themes I have ever heard in anime. On December 18th, it was announced that one of the big three would finally make its return to finish animating the final arc of the series. Bleach is finally coming back and it's coming back this fall. Just like World Trigger, the series art animation is going to receive the boost due to time and it's going to look really good. Not only did they bring back Ichigo's theme composed by Shiro Sagisu and sung by Hazel Fernandez, but even Getsuga Tensho got a demonic purple overhaul and it looks awesome. Bleach is one of the few series that I ended up finishing last year, being the last of the big three that I needed to watch, so it's safe to say that the wait wasn't nearly as bad for me compared to fans who have been waiting for years now. The final art being called the thousand year blood war sounds gruesome enough on its own and i've heard that not only is it the longest arc in the series but it's also said to be uncensored as well upon completing bleach i thought it overall was good but there is a lot more i need and hopefully i'll be getting that in this arc however what i'm looking to see is actually a multitude of things so today let's talk about the things i hope to see in the thousand year blood war arc now just an fyi i am 1000 percent anime only so if i say something that you know is in the manga please don't spoil in the comment section and i promise I won't have to Thanos snap you out of existence. Without further ado, let's start with talking about one of the biggest whereabouts in the series, Aizen. At the end of Bleach, we saw Aizen locked away, assumingly deep within the prison of the Soul Society for thousands of years to come. I know for a fact this man is not going to be chilling for the entirety of this war, so what I'm excited to see is if Aizen will play a role in this upcoming conflict. Surely he has to come into contact with Ichigo or the next antagonist at some point. What will his dialogue be after so much time has passed, or is he even the same man or has his ideology of being a winner changed while within solitude? I'm not aware of the threat level of this upcoming antagonist group, but even if they decide to go and recruit Aizen, surely he would join them. Aizen left me with the impression that whether his conviction is sought out or he fails, he will always be on his own team, so I can't imagine seeing him team up with anybody else. Hopefully, whenever his appearance is brought back, it will come with a good amount of substance. Next up, the rest of the Bankais. I'm gonna be honest with you, if there's one thing that left me salty at the end of Bleach, is that we did not get to see the Bankais of people like Rukia, Yoyorichi, and Urahara. Now, I understand Rukia is not captain level at the time, so it makes sense if she needs more time, especially since Toshiro's Bankai seem to a lot more polish and refining. Considering they both use ice, I guess it takes more time to perfect the craft. However, I really expected to see Yoyurichis and Urahawas in the final battle. This really has nothing to do with the story per se, but more of a personal want because of hype. Whenever a Bankai came out, it was pretty cool, and I really want to see the rest of them as I know there are plenty we haven't seen. Hopefully these next set of antagonists provoke the new ones to show themselves. Continuing from the Bankais, we have Lost. The title of this arc sounds like it's going to be the most brutal and unforgiving arc yet in terms of who will live and who may die. I'm excited to see just who exactly may kick the bucket this time around from captains to vice captains. Overall, in the main series, we truly only lost Gin in terms of the good guys, regardless of the carnage that was taking place. I have no doubt that Kubo eliminated the right choices, and I hope that these choices are people who I feel I should care about or have left a pretty good impact from the first portion of the anime. I get the same feeling of being a soul reaper as being a Jujutsu sorcerer. Just because you keep balance does not mean you're a hero or deserve to constantly triumph over the bad guys. Kubo always made sure to make these fights feel like they could go either way if you're not careful so i'm expecting a lot of loss in this arc and hopefully a lot of good character moments born from those who grieve from it second to last we have the origin of the kurosakis ichigo's dad showing up towards the end of the aizen fight was actually pretty cool and i'm glad his dad was not oblivious to everything around him given his son has received a lot of the spiritual powers what i really want to see is ishin's origin taking me back when he was a soul reaper and most importantly how he met ichigo's mom from my understanding ichigo's mom is a quincy 
and for her to be married to a soul reaper had to have been a complex issue that surely was not an easy resolution. I think that chunk of information can really help me get a better insight into Ishin's character and what role he might play in the Thousand Year Blood War. Even if he doesn't, the fact that Ichigo recognized that his father had reasons why he didn't tell him about the past is more than enough basis to bring up some answers now. Last but not least, we have Ichigo getting a combat upgrade. Let me be clear and say that I cannot take seeing Ichigo only use Getsuko Tensho for the entirety of this war, especially if it's long. I'm not sure how much time has passed between the events of the main season and this upcoming one, but I pray he's learned some new techniques. Whether it's another type of shape for his Zangetsu, some form of Keto, even him being able to learn to possibly use the Serral that his out of control hollow form had will be pretty cool. These few things pretty much wrap up my list. As an anime only, I have no idea what to expect in this upcoming arc. I have heard a multitude of opinions, but most of all, I'm gonna make sure to formulate my own and hopefully be able to talk about it with you all someday in the future. I'm happy that Bleach fans can finally see their favorite series on the screen once more, and I hope that the future of Bleach will only bring great things. With that, it's gonna bring me to the end of this video. As always, if you have enjoyed this video, then make sure to hit that like and subscribe button, and let me know what you are looking forward to in the A Thousand Year Blood War down below. As always, thank you for watching, stay safe and warm out there, and I will catch you guys in the next video.